Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today I will be discussing a common condition which most above the age of 50 are likely to experience. It's chronic venous disease. Let's look at why it occurs and three simple measures by which we can prevent and treat it. Chronic venous disease is a commonly underdiagnosed condition that affects the quality of our life. Symptoms include pain, skin discoloration in the shins, and edema with or without ulceration near the ankles. Its prevalence is increasing as we live longer and as obesity continues to rise. To understand why it occurs, we need to take a brief look at the pathophysiology or the reason why we get this condition. The veins of the lower limbs transport blood from the periphery to the heart. Due to the upright posture, the movement is against gravity. It requires the assistance of one-way valves in the veins and calf muscle contraction to pump and return the blood back to the heart. The one-way valves ensure that the blood flows only in one direction towards the heart, whilst limiting backflow and pooling of the blood in the lower extremities. As we grow older, our veins dilate and the valves do not function as efficiently as before, leading to increased pressure in the veins. This in turn causes some of the fluid to remain in the legs and cause edema and if untreated, eczematous changes in the skin. If neglected, they can also cause leg ulcers. There are many risk factors as well, including family history, aging, obesity, prolonged standing and sitting, hormonal therapy, and pregnancy. I'm going to mention the most basic, but also the most important way of treating this condition. The first is movement. There is very good evidence that exercise is incredibly effective in treating venous disease. In a meta-analysis published in JAMA Dermatology, they suggested the following exercises. First is seated heel rises, which is called passive resistant exercise. This can be done when we are sitting in a chair. Just raise the heel as much as possible from the floor. This contracts the calf muscles and pushes the blood back to the heart. We can also do the same when we are standing up. Another movement, which may be more pragmatic, and which is what I tell most of my patients, is to flex the ankle 10 times every 10 minutes when they're sitting or standing, or maybe 30 times every 30 minutes. This helps the blood flow back to the heart. The next form of movement that has shown efficacy is walking. Studies have shown that aiming to walk for 30 minutes a day for three times in a week may be beneficial. Another study looked at 10,000 steps a day, but this may be hard for those with other medical illnesses or who are very old. Next is leg elevation. This helps in many ways. It enhances the circulatory flow velocity, reduces the edema, and promotes healing of venous ulcers. Practically speaking, the only way we can achieve this is by lying down in bed for maybe two short periods during the day apart from our overnight sleep. I suggest about 10 minutes of lying down in bed for every three hours that we are sitting or standing. Trying to elevate our feet above the level of the heart and the toes above the level of our nose is very hard when we are sitting down. Even if we do, it does not easily flow to the heart as it may stagnate in the hip area. So my own opinion is that elevating the leg while sitting in a couch or chair is singularly unhelpful. Lying down in bed for just two short periods in the day is the most pragmatic option. Last is compression. The use of compression stockings is the mainstay of conservative management and is based on the severity of the condition. Compression decreases the size of both the superficial and the deep veins and reduces venous pressure and edema. The use of graded elastic stockings between 20 and 50 millimeters mercury is suggested in most texts. Some find them too tight, so I ask my patients to get the flight socks that are used on long flights to prevent DVTs. They may come up with a zip-up option, which may be helpful for those who are unable to bend and apply the tight stockings themselves. There are other lifestyle changes that may be helpful as well. Avoid wearing high-heeled shoes as it interferes with the normal pumping action of the calf muscles. Ensure proper nutrition as deficiency of vitamins, protein and zinc predisposed to poor skin healing. Skin care is also very important, particularly cleansing and using moisturizers to help maintain the cutaneous barrier. I've done a video on how to apply moisturizers on the limb, which may have some useful information. Weight control will also be useful in the long term. So remember the three most important ways of addressing this common problem. Movement with either walking or exercises, leg elevation, 
practically speaking by lying down for a few minutes every three hours and compression stockings. I hope this information has been helpful for you. Thank you for listening and bye.